example planting bamboo manually it takes a lot of effort and actually planting bamboo is not a difficult job so i told you in one of the slides that bamboo adapts to its environment it's adaptable so it even if you grow it on unfertile land it will grow so instead of just using manual plantation which uh, requires a lot of uh, planning we need to arrange uh, resources for that we can just simply have a drone which will make the entire task much simpler that was what we thought when we decided to face this problem i really like that you very well described the, your business model and i actually in fact i really like why now because that's the question i always ask entrepreneurs why do you think is now the right time and i think you were very articulate about it um funny story you know the the name of um, our firm is pear but before pear my partner and i we thought the name of our fund should be bamboo because um you know startups grow so fast these days and i thought bamboo is a great representative of the nature of startups today so kudos to you to just focusing on that and i think the the name of samurai is is just very uh, appropriate for this but i encourage you to simplify a little bit on the solution especially the first meeting either with investors or potential partners you always leverage the first meeting to make sure there is a there is a second or third meeting either with your investors or with your partners or even if you want to hire i think you are full of knowledge i don't know as much as you know about this market because you have done so much research so i think you have you have to just make it as simple as the beginning you did it because you just put so much information over there but i actually think uh, it was very well done i think it's something i never heard of it so i think if you continue doing this um i i love to learn more in fact if you look at my tweets yesterday you have invested in five companies um that really help climate change and 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 i think i encourage you to look at those five companies one of them is actually saving plastic the other ones is Uh, launching balloons for predicting weather one is uh, in the solar industry the other one is is the disaster recovery and the, the last one is it's a company actually a girl from Lebanon came to america and she created a technology to make cheese from soy so i and i think your company it fits very much in that category that you're excited so i just want to kudos to you to just take a take a, a very um unusual path for entrepreneurs and for working on on something really that matters and you can you can um you know impact a lot of life so i it building a company is not easy is a lot of challenges but every company starts where you are starting today in the room behind this computer with a lot of hope vision and my my only comment or suggestion if i want to leave here just build a great team i think if you think about you know barcelona football team you want to be the barcelona you want to be the best people in your team because those are the people who are going to innovate but well, i just want to thank you for educating me and i learned here a lot but let me ask you one question what is your biggest challenge today about the solution you are asking the whole company let's say what you present that if 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 you there's one one challenge keeps you at night and you think about it what is that yeah the one main challenge is that will people actually uh, think of converting a coal power plant into a bamboo biomass plant they might uh, have a lot of questions like isn't it just going to be the same as burning coal what's the use of it and will it be really costly so i'm i i and my team are trying to answer some of those questions and it's a really big challenge to solve that's interesting i see metals behind you so i have to tell me one day what are those metals on the wall that you have thanks for uh, some advice as well so i thank actually you. So, so nice to meet you you can always reach out to me and here has my email so feel free to to reach out to me if you want to talk to any of our founders in this kind of this space i'll be more than happy to make an introduction to any of our founders so you can talk to them thank you very much i actually saw your tweets uh, they seemed very interesting yeah if any of those founders you want to talk to let me know i'll i'll make introduction right. okay thanks very nice meeting you jagan fantastic jagan you did a great job
uh, uh, the, to get, give you a background, uh, there are about 16 companies, startups in the innovation hub right now. And they are working on submission for the Elon Musk carbon removal oh. X prize. Uh, the X prize uh, was used to, is a hundred million dollar, five million dollar they assigned to a student, but was for college students. And Anusha, the CEO of Express, came once and the kids pitched to her. And on the fly, she got so impressed that they took out the minimum age. Wow. And so now <laughs> they impressive. can apply for that. That's so awesome. what's amazing is these uh, kids are, they have a very interesting cooperation. They're working with each other. They're reducing the number of the solutions to the ones which make, you know, we had eight solutions. Now they're down to about four and they're coalescing around the ones that seems more powerful and, and more feasible. Uh, and at the same time, the other companies are working on building library parts, which is in the poly of simulation environment helps to simulate those solutions. So you're going to see a couple of other companies that working on the part libraries that gets used. Very impressive. So uh, next one, uh, let's go with, uh, with the golden ratio, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Sorry about the connection problem before. Uh, but can you hear my voice clear? Yes. yes. To make sure, just to make sure. Yes. Very nice meeting you. I don't see you, but good to meet you. Yeah, great. Nice to meet you, too. Um, just one second, please. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Aliazi. I am from Oman. I am a grade 10 student and I am the CEO of Golden Ratio. We have team members from Azerbaijan, Palestine, India, and Nigeria. And uh, our company is mostly interested in designing. Uh, to create new parts, new design, and start a new creative libraries to help other startups to build their own carbon removal solution machines. So we started with the factory libraries, uh, uh, sorry, the factory library. Um, so first we, the first step is to create the parts in Blender and add anchors to it. So as you can see, here's um, Blender. We, um, created some parts. Actually, there are uh, already models design. We just add anchors to them. We change the vertex color and we um, did some, cha some changes on them. So the next thing is what we did is we put all of the part in one spreadsheet and we give each part a name and uh, a description also. Sorry, uh, it's not opening here. Sorry, Adiyazi, let me ask you a question here while this loading up. Can, can you explain a little bit more of the, so the, the, what part of this, this, is this your design or this is the existing design? Uh, it's uh, a ready model design uh, that you can like uh, upload, but we did um, lots of changes in it to make it, uh, to let it match the parts, the other parts on poly app. And it took a lot of time actually to make it more uh, to what we design. And for each part here, we add, um, a picture and description and also price. So what is the price? When other users uh, unlock parts, they have to pay, for example, for each part, uh, an amount of poly coins. So if they, for example, choose this part, they have to pay 100 poly coins to unlock the part. And the benefits goes back to our company, to our startup. And that's good because it will increase our poly coins revenue. So what we did next is uh, we tested them on uh, uh, dev.polyapp.com. They are not still, they are not on polyapp.com, 
but we are te we tested them uh, here and um, we checked them. And as you can see here is the library, uh, the pipes. So if I opened here the factory, you can see each part with a name and each part is colorable and you can resize it also. Um, this is the best thing that you can change color and make it change to the color you, you like. And you can resize it too. Um, and the next thing is uh, what we want to do is to build more libraries, but our own libraries. So the strategy is first to ask. We ask the users what parts they would like to see on PolyApp and what parts can help their solution, their carbon removal solutions. So how we can ask, how we can ask them, we can publish a survey on uh, the innovation hub and um, they can reply, they can just tell us what they would like to see next on PolyApp. And then we collect the most requested parts and put them all in one spreadsheet. After that, we start designing the parts by collaborating with other companies to help speed up release the new parts. Um, and this is pretty much it. Sorry for the connection. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Riazi. It's a uh, it's very refreshing idea. I think I've never heard of this and I really, I'm just trying to think through it, but I think you have been thinking really out of the box, which is um, all the good entrepreneurs do it. So I, I just want to congratulate you, um, you know, looking at, at, at a different solution. I think at the, the DNA of uh, what you do is collaboration. And I, I really like the idea of your team is international. And so that shows that the, the essence and DNA of this team is already the collaboration. Um, I like to know that why did you decide to do pipes first? So that will be something that you explain a little bit history of how you arrive. And you don't need to do it now, but one of the idea, one of the suggestions I always have to entrepreneurs that really give a little bit history of either the market and the solution what, what made you think of this and how did you arrive here? That's one. And a little bit thinking about what you're building today and the collaboration of the community, which I think is very powerful and probably up. What do you think your product or company look like in the next three, five, 10 years? And you don't need to have the any answer now, but you just need to think about it. So those are one of the things I, I suggest to think through and, and for the product like yours, I think you always put it out there and you pay a lot of the attention to the community and users. So one of the things I encourage you to do once this product, I don't know is live or not, but you can get a lot of feedback and, and watch the user's behavior on, on Polio. But again, well, thank you so much for sharing this. And you know, I really like this kind of um, the remote international team you build, which is really representative of, of the company. Thank you. I can answer your first question. Yes, uh, why we chose Pipes? Uh, first of all, uh, other startups are working on solution for the carbon removal. And uh, Jagan, Jagan's company is working on one of the solutions that he just presented. And he needed these pipes for his solution to, um, to make it more uh, like to improve his solution. And we decided to create these parts for his solution. Specifically, we asked the companies uh, in person and other companies suggested other, pa uh, other parts and we are uh, working on them. What do you think the next, I mean, what, what if after pipe, what will be the next? Have you thought about it? Um, maybe it's also related to the factory, which is, for example, a water tank or um, a factory wall or uh, anything related to the factory. For other companies, uh, they are for other startups. They are working on chemical solutions, and other startups are working on the parts for chemicals. I, I asked the same question I asked Japan. So, what do you think is your biggest biggest challenge? 
today? No, you mean? Yes. The connection problem, maybe. <laughs> it's no. In, if I uh, if I take your question personally, it's a connection problem. But if we talk in general, uh, for example, is me as a girl leading is it's very hard because, like for example, others don't get you seriously sometimes. Uh, but it's okay. There, uh, there's always challenge, and I think I can go through the challenge. There's no problem. Yes, that's why you're an entrepreneur. I think um, I, I can see you have the desire and the motivation and the skills. And you know, entrepreneurs walk through the wall to make things happen. And I, I think I think you represent that really well. The fact that you're working on this idea and and build a team and have. Um, the courage to be on this platform speaking to, to investors that tells who you are. So my suggestion is just focus on the future and nothing should stop you. And, um, you know, humans always, most of the humans in the world, they put ceiling on their dreams, but we should have no ceiling on our dreams and everything is possible. Thank you so much, sir. You well, inspire us a lot. Thank you. It's, it's actually reversed. I, I actually think I, you know, the, the, this last few minutes, you, you, both you and Jagan have inspired me so much that I, I just feel I'm doing a little compared to what you are doing and Jagan are doing. So, you know, the, the honor and pleasure is mine meeting people like you and it's very encouraging. And I think I feel so good about the future of, of our planet, of our humanity, meeting people like you. I think uh, it's going to be in good hands. So, uh, Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, let me let me say something. And by the way, because of timing, let's uh, let's um, you have go it. faster. Yeah, let, let's let's do it at these two companies because I want to give you time, Pejman, to to give a little bit overview of the journey for entrepreneur. That's very valuable. But I want to say one thing. I want you to know, like for example, Aliaz's team was working on one of the solutions. And I want you to know that when, when she says it's difficult, I want you to know what kind of thing they achieved. Uh, she and her team were working on using uh, a special rock in Oman, which captures carbon. And she managed to make a ministry in, in Oman to connect her to the university. She had the talk with them. They come to the conclusion that the solution is not viable. They changed the direction of their company. They reached out to the other company and now they're collaborating. So Aliazi, I really want to congratulate you and your company to work such an adaptability and finding your way that many grown-ups are not able to do that rapidly in the process of their company growth. So I want to share that with you because- I, I appreciate it. Yeah. It was very, very obvious that um, Yazi is just a very strong entrepreneur. Let's do this. So, uh, super capable team. How about you do next week? Okay, if you don't mind, if it's okay, uh, let's give time to Page One to give an overview. Page One, if you can, kind of about the journey you had and the journey you see they have in place. And this question constantly come. They ask it lesser, but like you know about ten sessions earlier or 15 session earlier they were asked a lot about i'm a kid they don't take me serious they're not asking that anymore it's very interesting that question kind of got, gone out of the room because they see people take them serious but how they can do independent of their age what's the process and how can they go this environment with polycoin and its own economy is a practice such that they can do this in real economy but the equations and the dynamic is nothing different. Is the people, is the collaboration, is the innovation, all is the same. So if you can share that with them for the next 10 minutes, sure. I really appreciate it. Yeah, maybe, maybe what I can share with all of you is what I have learned from the best entrepreneurs I've ever worked with, because there are some traits really common among them. So maybe that, that part I'll share with you um, so the number one thing that is common among the best entrepreneurs, these are the people who have built Dropbox, DoorDash, Airbnb, Uber of the world, 
or Garden Health and Google and so on. It's the insane desire to build something out of nothing. This is just number one. And that means it's commitment to be an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur is somebody who builds something out of nothing. And, and these people have a huge commitment to do that. So they're, they're, they're an entrepreneur for the right reason. Because, not because it's fashionable, not because they want to get rich. It's just they want to build something out of nothing. And that building something out of nothing means creating jobs, creating products that people love, and creating wealth and a better, better future for humanity. That's one. The number two is their relationship and knowledge of the market and the product they're building. They either have history, they've worked in that industry, they have academic background, or they study it really well. It's not those people say, oh, crypto or blockchain is very fashionable now, let me start a company in blockchain or crypto. Even if they want to start a company in crypto or blockchain, as an example, they spend a lot of time thinking and learning. So, and most of the time, our people like Javan and Aliazi who come and educate us, I don't know about this collaboration of um, what Aliazi does or, or, or Bamboo. It's, it's their job to edu educate me and, and picture the future. So a deep understanding on your market and product and the solution is very important. Three, people who have the ability to build good teams. I think you have to make sure one, you hire really good people for the right reason and why somebody should join you. So that's something you have to think about it. I like founders who are um, paranoid in a good way. What I mean by that is people who are confident where the company is going and they have a vision for the next five, 10, 20 years, but they question themselves every day in the right way. Am I making the right decision today? Am I hiring the right people? Am I talking to the right um, partnership? Am I using my time wisely? So that's, the, that's very, very important. And last is people who have vision. It's okay that things doesn't work today and that's the nature of company. And as, as Amir mentioned, you, you know, like Aliazi, you just go after something, it doesn't work, you pivot to something else. And that's why you need a really good team to can, you can be always innovative. But you, 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 might, you, you need to have a vision for the future of your company and what that's your company and your product do today. Does it matter in five years and 10 years? So you have to really think about it. The, the, the maybe the most important thing I've learned from entrepreneurs last 21 years, the best one are the ones who invest in themselves and they're constantly learning. Um, you know, I met Drew and Arash, the co-founders of Dropbox, um, after graduating from MIT, they, they never built, they never built the product, they never worked anywhere. And, you know, now Drew is running a public company, a $10 billion company. And when you talk to him, he says, yes, I was a, I was a great programmer, computer scientist from MIT, and I never been a CEO of a big company. But I decided to learn and I started to read a lot of books. And I mean, I really encourage for the entire group here to, there is Drew published a list of 13 or 17 books that made him a better CEO. It's actually online. If you, if you search for Drew Houston um, book recommendation, these are the books he read. And he said, it's funny, people spend like a few hundred thousand dollars to meet the CEO of another company to learn. I just buy a book for 20 bucks or $10 and I read it. So I really think you should educate yourself, constant learning and grow as your company grow. So these are, if, if I want to share with you what I learned from entrepreneurs, it's, it's a summary of this. People have different view, but I pause here. If anybody has any questions, it seems people have questions here. Definitely that, that was great. Uh, thank you. Let's go to some questions. Uh, Ava, go ahead, please. Well, Ava, you're asking what will we change in the next 10 years? Um, and I will show you, you know, anybody turn on your camera if you can. So go ahead, please. So I'm sure there's going to be plenty of changes in the next 10 years, which will affect any ideas like visions you have. So what do you personally think will change in the next 10 years? Like, because 
10 years is, although it's not super long as like, it's not very long, it's long enough for some change. So what do you think will happen in the next 10 years um, to the economy, to, um, to technology, to practically everything? What is your like, assumption? Yeah, I actually think, first of all, good morning. Nice to meet you, Baba. I actually think the, this is just the beginning of fast innovation going forward. If you look at the last 20 years, there's a lot of infrastructure um, is built that makes innovation, I don't want to say easier, but smoother. Like 20 years ago, when I started to be an investor, in order to start a company, you should have raised a few million dollars to just do your networking and you had to buy places to put computers for your networking and data warehousing. Now you can use Amazon AWS and pay a little. So I actually think there will be a, a new generation of the companies that innovate faster than last 20 years. That's one. Obviously, artificial intelligence and machine learning will change and will impact a lot of innovation. I, I, I actually believe that there will be a new generation of entrepreneurs who are going to work off most important problems in the world, healthcare, education, um, climate change, which we haven't had before as much. So I think there are people like you, Jadan or Yazi that are thinking about this. So I think you'll see a lot of innovation in that space. And at the end, the answer of what the exact message, I don't know. I actually, one of the exciting things that I do is I don't know. And then I wait for that entrepreneur come to my office and surprise me and said, this is the future. I never knew that I'm going to invest in the company that makes cheese out of soy. And I never thought of it, but somebody walks through and educate you and you all can come and, and, and picture the future that I didn't know. And, and I think my job is to see the future through your eyes, which is very hard for, for investors to do. So are people like you who are really creating the future, not investors? So there are some fundamental, I think, has been created that it, um, it, it helps the pace of innovation. What exactly will happen? I don't know. And that's the beauty of, of tech and innovation. So I just have one more question. So. Yeah um what do you think will spark innovation to go faster will it be out of necessity or what do you think specifically will make innovation go faster why would you think that yeah well, obviously it's necessity what people need and and i think is uh you know for example is you know doordash which is a food delivery mm -hmm. as people think it's food delivery business but it's a logistic company it, it, it started out of the, the, the pain that Tony had watching his mom running a restaurant and the delivery was hard and he got educated and he wanted to do something in small businesses. So all of this started with the entrepreneur's problems. And I think it's, it's what drives innovation is what entrepreneurs and the problem exists in the market. Less is on the, on, on, on the, Kind of the uh, the money part of it is just less important but really good entrepreneurs it's just a necessity of what the problem exists and this problem changes um like for example today climate change it's a huge issue for our planet and it might have not been the same thing 20 years but today if we don't do it we don't know what happens in the next 50 100 years all right thank you thank you Allah. great thank you noel can you show your uh, video and go at least? Um, I can't turn my camera on at the moment, but I will ask my questions. No problem. Just tell from what country and what way you are also. Thank you. Okay. My name is Noel. I'm in the SMB company. I am in grade seven and I am from Rwanda. Hi, Noel. How are you? I'm good. So my question was, what challenges do you think women will face in the future on company leaderships? Because as we know, um, in this current world we live in, we suffer from problems of gender inequality. When like a woman tries to lead, most people, I'm not saying all, 
would think, oh, men deserve, men are stronger because sometimes people have the mindset that men are the leaders of the family. So automatically women play a lower, a lower role. Yes, I have a very good news for you, Noel, that the world is changing. And, and I think uh, there is, a, um, I understand the challenges women have around the globe, but uh, um, there are so many great leaders in tech and non-tech, in sports, in politics, in education, in healthcare, and there are examples of people like you. I, I think the, the, I have a daughter who is going to university. My partner is actually a woman who got her PhD at Stanford University. She's an immigrant and started three companies. Um, I think uh, I, I acknowledge the challenges, but I actually think <clears throat> it's how you develop your own personality first, staying strong, educate yourself, build a good team around yourself and, and focus on, on what your dreams are. It's, it's just really key and it has to start individually I think every woman, every man in the world has the responsibility to help each other. So I think it starts with ourselves and education. Um, but, but I'm very hopeful because things has been changing, especially last decade. And we see in, in, in my business, which is take in a new generation of, of women leaders and young women leaders that they are exceptional and are making a change. In fact, we started, um, a new community, and I encourage you to look at it, called um, Female um, Founder Circle. Um, is actually we selected top 30 female engineers in the world for eight weeks program workshops, how to start the company, meeting founder and CEO. And Amajan, I'm gonna in, I'm gonna extend my invitation today that every girl in this platform can attend our uh, some of our talks over Zoom and I'll send you the invitation. This is this is only 30, think about it, 30 female engineers in the world can attend, but um, you inspire me so much that I'm gonna extend this invitation that we invite you to attend some of these talks. And these talks are with like um, Chief Technology Officer of Cisco, VP of Engineering of Shopify is all women. So, um, and people who have built companies. So I'll send you a schedule and we'll be more than happy and honored to host you, Noel, and people like you at our, our speaker series and workshops. Thank you. But I also have one more question. It's not really a question. It's kind of a favor to ask. Yes. Um, I know you're really busy, but you really inspire us and would really like you to be our advisor to help us in the innovative hub because we think that your opinion and your guidance might help us accelerate in our progress and the work we do. Well, I appreciate it very much. So I think uh, I can, if I provide any feedback or advice, I'll be more than happy to do it. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. And Pejban, I want to say one thing to you that I think among the co-founders in Innovation Hub, we have more girls than boys. That's so awesome. already they prove that, you know, they can change the world. <laughs> yes, I actually will send you, I, I think we are hosting a few female founders. So I'll send you at the Zoom, they can invitation. They can, they can attend and see over there and they can even talk to these people. So fantastic. Thank you. So let's, if you don't mind, we go one more question. Jogana is asking, we are past one minute, but I'm sorry about that, uh, Pejman. Uh, so let's ask one more question. Is that okay? Yes. No, of course. Yes. Sorry. Hey. Jagan, go ahead. Please. Yeah. So I had a question. What more do you think our company needs to do to get funding? Yeah, I actually think we have a few, few things. One, um, you have to get the story right, means your, the story of Samurai, um, and work on your deck. And, you know, I can, we can, you, you can reach out to me and I can spend a little bit more time on your deck and, and figure out, okay, do we have a, we have a playbook? Actually, there is a, we, we have a, a kind of a structure of what is the good deck look like. So that's one thing. And then what is your ask? So I actually think how much money you need and what you achieve with that money, you need to figure it out. 
and, and normally investors would like to see, I'm raising this much money, uh, this percentage of it is going to hire my engineer, this one is going for marketing and sales, whatever is the right thing to do. And then this is what I achieved in, a, in the next, let's say six to nine months. So you need to explain that. It doesn't need to be exact, but you need to have some ideas about how much money you want to raise and how do you spend that money and what do you achieve with it? So that's basically what, what, our, what the first step is and start to target the right investors. Sometimes I see entrepreneurs um, talk to the wrong investors, which one, this is not the market and space they're interested or the amount of the investment they are doing is a lot more, a lot less. So you need to really talk to people like Amir and Zohre and me to say, I want to start raise this much for the right investor. So if I want to summarize it, work on your story and your deck, create a kind of the financial plan and how much money you need, where you want to spend it, and then what you want to achieve with that. And then the third one, speak to the right investors. Okay. Thanks. I had another question. So recently, Anita, the partner in GSV, uh, came to Innovation Hub and uh, she saw my pitch and she mailed me that uh, she would introduce me to a clean tech accelerator uh, in India. So could you also introduce me to those uh, clean tech companies you tweeted about? Yes. If you If you let me know which one... It's the number one choice you have. I can introduce you to one of them. Oh, okay. Thanks. I actually think you should talk to um, uh, Repurpose Global. It's actually there is a first platform to save plastics. And actually, she's from, from Dubai. Oh, it went okay. To, it went to Harvard Business School. So I think that will be my bit. But take a look, see which one you're more interested in making introduction. Okay. I will. Uh, thanks for. And actually, you can get my email from from Amir and forward me your deck. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so there's a game question. Come, this is the last one. Ava, can you go with your question, and then after that, we should uh, not get bothered uh, more patient. Go ahead, Ava. I to keep your time. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. But when I heard that you were actually like creating, I guess, a program with many uh, top female engineers, I just wanted to say this. We have created a workshop with a nonprofit led by a female high schooler um, for young females getting into STEM. And we're actually creating workshops for PolyUp for them. And we are also doing the same. We're trying to do the same for a company called GSV, who have, who have a similar program for all people of ages in high school. And we were thinking, um, I just wanna know more about what that is like, and maybe we could even um, create a partnership in that. I'm not really sure um, what it's about, but I'm- many, um, Abba, How many female high schoolers you have on this this program? I believe, I'm, um, I believe it's around, I believe it's around 20 currently, but I need to ask if they're going to get more to join because we haven't really put on a limit yet and we're waiting for more people to sign up because we, re we just recently created these workshops, but I'm guessing it's going to be around 20 currently. We just want to see what um, uh, you were talking about. Yeah, sure. I think you can reach out to me. We can we can discuss it. This what we built is for those thirty female engineers, and these are people who are starting a company. I don't know the content how useful is for high school, but we might be able to create some other summit or one day. So let's brainstorm on that. Interesting. That's a good idea what you're doing. Could we simply just watch one of the um, like? Yeah, 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 sure. Just shoot shoot me an email. What happens. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Pejman, really appreciate it. That of course, was... I just want to make sure the, the other two companies, um, I, if they want to pitch, I'm okay to, like, I, I hate you that. Want to pitch. So then, then uh, what, what was the other company? I think is, how is it you? This Was it the, you were on the list? Go ahead. Uh, Pejman, give me the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I think I, I entrepreneurs yeah, yeah. work. So let, let's, let's go ahead. Pejman, uh, uh, 
Ava, please go ahead. So we just recently created a, so we just recently stopped doing carbon removal because we, uh, of like uh, less progress in, in that and more progress in libraries in this specifically. So what we're doing is we're actually contacting Anita from GSV, like um, Jovan is doing, they're doing something a little bit different though. We're actually thinking of making making workshops with them for polyp or something like that. And we've been in contact with them for a while now. Um, it's called GSV, you can search it up, I believe. And also, we're also at the same time um, partnering with a nonprofit led by a um, female high schooler and their name is Maya. Um, and we are trying to create workshops for poly for them because they are very interested in STEM and we want to see what we can do. We are experimenting with what we can do with um, polyp and seeing if we can add that into their programs or curriculums, I guess. And that is something extremely new that we're doing, but we're going to be doing our best to try to scale it upwards. And because of how scalable polyp is and how um, it's very easy to teach at a scalable level. So that's an extremely interesting thing that we are starting to go into now that our company is stopped with Carnival and we have a lot more time to use. So, so our the product of your company, what is what is going to be one is that the reach out you're doing i understand you are working on two things you're saying you're stopping the solution are you still working on the library yes we are still working on the library we just had to do you want to really rapidly show that i mean do you have something right now that you want to show of course um let me show it right now give me a minute um right here So here's something that we can make with the parts in the library. It's just basically a basic design that we can make with a few of the parts, the cap, eyes, a mouth, ears, and a head. And our library is basically an avatar library. Um, and it can be used in pretty much every aspect of polyp because anything where you want people, maybe in a city, in practically anything you can think of, you probably need some people. And to make an actual face, what you will need is this avatar library. You do have in polyup one head and it's called poly, which you can use as a head, but you cannot copy and paste it unlike these. It's poly is singular, there's only one of them. Um, and so that's why this is so important because we also have hair caps and, uh, and we even have a body, which is like we have, so it's like a Lego. Our, our bodies are like Legos, Lego pieces. So if we want a suit, for example, it would be one of like those Lego pieces that already have a suit maybe painted onto it, looks like it's painted on. So we wouldn't put a body then add clothes on. What we would do is we would put a, a bot body with clothes already onto it and we can choose which clothes we would like. And that's pretty much it. That's the idea for our library. And I'm sure that's gonna be pretty, um, pretty useful to people who are trying to create things like cities. Um, and carbon removal has probably a lot of cities due to um, the biggest carbon footprints being in large cities. And uh, that's why we are creating it. And we are also thinking of prices in polycoins for these, um, these parts, because in, in order to, to create these parts, we have to get some revenue. And we are we ha we haven't chosen the exact prices quite yet, but we will be um, creating them soon. And that's pretty much it for the library. Who is uh, who is designing this or creating? Is that you? Uh, yes, uh, we created the entire. Uh, originally, before the companies were um, created, I created a design, and then once the companies were created, we actually have one person from our company who's super good at Blender, and we all we are all kind of pitching in. But this is the main person. Her name is Zarifa, and she's creating most of these in Blender, and. She's creating these based off the designs that were originally made, not by Polyup, but um, by our company originally. And these are just, that's basically who's making them. Yeah, I really like to, my suggestion is just use the power of community to run this design contest down the road, perhaps. That's something you can use Polyup or even the, um, the, the high schooler could be, could be really encouraging. And at the same time, is a good marketing for Polyup. If you put this design in the next version of them, 
who are up for competition and bringing the community, I think will be a lot of collaborations. Interesting. So that is actually something we've considered, and I guess we could we could try that out. We've considered it, but we haven't actually put it into action yet. Um, and that would be a great idea to try. So we'll do that for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Alida. Great. Uh, Pejman, really appreciate it, man. Thank <laughs> it's you so much. Like this one was of the most interactive discussion we have had over the past many weeks. So that, that was very good. I appreciate it. This is perhaps the best birthday gift I've ever got last Oh, year. it's your birthday. <laughs> so I, I, really, I really enjoyed it. You all inspired me. Keep up the good work. I think the world is yours. Nothing should stop you. Dream big. Uh, be good, be kind. Um, I, I believe in life, whatever you do, if you become the best at it, something magical will happen. You know, I remember when I came to America, I didn't have money, I didn't speak the language. So I just wanted um, to find a job. And, you know, if you don't know the language, the, the job opportunities is very limited. So my first job was working in a car wash. So I washed cars when I came to America, but I tell you, I was the best car washer the world has ever seen. I mean, nobody washed cars like me because I took so much pride in that job. And I washed cars every day, like this is the best job in the world. And, you know, slowly things change. So whatever you do, I, 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 if I was staying in the car, washing cars, I would have had like so many car washes today because I just love doing it. So just love do whatever you do, something good will happen. Fantastic, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, that, that was amazing. And, you know, these kids are not letting you go, man. You, you're yeah. not in trouble. <laughs> no, no, Thanks a lot. Well, to continue the conversation. But thank you so much, Amijan. You and Zora gave me the opportunity. This is like really inspiring. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. happy birthday, Pejman. Happy birthday. Thank you, Pejman. Have a great day, Pejman. So the kids be here. We'll talk a little bit. But Pejman, thanks a lot.